Welcome back to Echo. I've just unlocked the elevator, or I guess multiple no! elevators, by collecting all those blue orbs. Because there's two markers, so I'm pretty sure there's two. But before going there, I want to see if I can get enough of those tuning forks to complete the message. I'm not exactly sure where I've been, but I think a pretty good guide on that is going to be to look through here and see where the blue dots are. Because where the blue dots are is probably places I haven't really explored much, if at all. Oh! You're spotting me. Yeah, so just... Pretty much just over that way. Okay. Let's get moving. I think I've already gotten this one. Yeah. Given that I'm looking for them, I think I'm going to start using my scan a bit. Oh, I actually see one right over there. Scan didn't quite reach it, but... Uh-oh. Thank you very much. Shall I head up? Yeah. Oh, actually, I wanted to push him over the edge, but forgot I had the orb. Oh, oh, one of the powerful ones spotted me. Sort of. Not red, but orange. Yeah, where was that ring? Oh, down there? Down there. I thought they were going to ring it. Please ring it. All right. Ah! 
Oh, did it see me? Oh no, good. I saw someone else. Whew. Sorry. You can head up. You've got enough orbs. Is there any below me? Forgot. Yes, down there. Please don't spot me, please don't spot me. Ooh. Right there. There's another one down here. I think I need like one or two more. Probably two. Yeah, I think there'll actually I think there will be enough. Uh oh, they spotted me. Oh no. Oh, that's not one of the powerful ones, is it? No, okay. Whew, thought it was. Where does this, where does this go? Send it out again. Ah, it's down there. I've completely lost track of where I've been and where I haven't been. Wait. Where was it? It couldn't have been all the way down here. It's too far. I feel like this is close to the start, but let's grab some power. I feel like this is where I came into this place from. Oh yeah, it is actually. Okay. Oh, I think I saw it. It's right... Yeah, you can't see it, but... Yeah, I saw it, and it's not a tuning fork, it's an energy thing, which I still want, but not the highest priority right now. And I do not know how to get there either. Oh, hey. Oh, God. Sprinty. Okay, well, I think it's going to be increasingly hard to find the last one or two, so I'm going to cut here and I'll be back when I find one. Okay, I can't seem to find any more here. However, I did just realize that there's actually three waypoints. Not two. There's one right here and then two above me. So I think this, since it looks like a lift, is probably going to... Oh, crap. Shit. Yeah, since it looks like a lift, it's probably going to take me up there, and maybe there's some more up there. Yeah, there's a whole new level that I've never been to. Looks like there's no enemies up here. Interesting, but that also means there's probably no thingies, you know? Tuning forks. 
That's what they're called. Why is there a safe spot up here, though? If there's no enemies. Well, let's take a look around. Maybe there are thingies. And I also see elevators, which might... Which might take me to places that I've never been able to access before. I feel like I heard a ring. So where does this go? Oh, we got enemies. Oh, yes. So have I been here? I don't feel like I went down enough to have been here. I'm not sure. Oh, shit. Oh, it's one of the weaker ones. It's fine. Yeah, I don't think I've been here. Alright, there's gotta be some tuning forks here. game just crashed. Okay, I managed to find- oh god. Oh no, oh no, don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. Oh, this is a bad place to be. Ooh, I don't like this. Okay, uh, but yeah, I found one over here. So hopefully that is the last one I need and I don't need one more. Okay, I was barely paying attention because I was running for my friggin' life, but I think I need one more. Ugh. Alright, I'll see if I can find it. Oh, this is a very bad situation to be in! Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think there's enough tuning forks, or if there is, I have to get literally like every single one. And I just can't find them all. I wonder if you have close to all of them, if it's enough to sort of read it. Or if it's still going to be too distorted, it's probably not going to be readable. Oh, uh, the voice of eternity, the first... Eh, uh, I can't read it. Wait, my goal is moving? Is that uh, a staff? 
This seems to be the only marker I have, though. Do I just need a single staff? Hmm. Interesting, I just realized I don't see any of my normal echoes here. Are they starting to disappear now? Now it's just the stronger ones? That's a disturbing thought. But I guess it's kind of what I expect. So this is like a little safe area. Lots of recharges down here. Oh yeah, single place for a staff. Actually, was the staff gonna open? Oh, I think probably the bridge or something. I'm not sure, we'll see. Looking for any bonus things around here. Seems pretty sparse. Keep the flower in between me and them. Please don't look this way, please don't look this way. Whew. Yeah, I don't think there's any tuning forks or anything around here. And that elevator's gonna go down, probably down to that one down there. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think if I should take this one out. Because if I shoot down below or up above, they're, I'm pretty sure they're both gonna hear me. Oh no, oh no. I don't have enough power. There we go. Okay, I don't have enough power for you. Actually, I do. Whoa, hello, buddy. Do they know how to use elevators? I don't think they do. Let's just uh, wait for the heat to die down. I still need to actually get the staff, it's down there. Oh, I actually see an energy thing over there. I think, right there. Oh god, holy shit! Did not expect them to just spawn in right behind me. Thankfully, it looks like they're not re-picking up the staff. It's not moving, so that's good.
Oh god. Oh! Wow. Guess I should have done a scan. Holy hell. Christ. I just mobbed me in seconds. Oh, I think that might be the door that the staff opens. No. Well, there's one on each side. But then again, there are two elevators to take you down here, so yeah, probably opens both. Okay, try number two. Let's try a different tactic. Instead of going through the center, it looks like from the side. Can maybe get in there a little bit easier. I don't think I want this thing. Got it. Yes, they reset right when I did that. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And got my power back. Nice. Yeah, we got far enough away, we're fine. Whoa. Oh my god, I never even saw that. Even when all the power's off, pretty much. That's still there. What is that? It's a lift. Doesn't open any door. Whoa. This is it, Ben. We're here. You're breaking up. I'm hearing you fine, but the sphere is messing with your reception. Wow. Let's walk into the light. The heck is gonna happen? If I cut out entirely, I'd better say this now. Good luck, Ben. And be careful. What's this now? It must be making it from Foster's memories to ease his return. Look at the detail. So this is just like the ship, I guess? The ship that we originally came from? Whoa. Okay, so the cycles still happen here.
Why am I wearing entirely different clothes? The cube. It's gone. The cube. I think you're in for a disappointment. There's nothing in there. It's, it's just, just a pretty cube. What? The fact that your grandfather did unspeakable things doesn't prove he was right. The Foster can come back. These are my memories. You have to say. This isn't about Foster. It's about me. You consider yourself the answer to the eternal questions of life and death. You killed him. Now you lost our chance. You killed him, you stupid bitch. And now you've lost our chances of bringing him back. How clever is that? Now what did N say near the beginning? The mind and the or the body and this and the spirit would enter through different doors. Something like that. Could this be the spirit part? So that's how it is. Just like last time. Only one of us is getting out alive. That's all I asked for, I suppose. A chance to correct my mistake. I just didn't imagine it would be this damn difficult. Well, you said it, Gramps. Great challenges and equally great rewards. Take care, Foster. Of London as well. So, Foster has been resurrected. I was almost expecting more to happen at the end, it felt so sudden. I guess it is sort of fitting on a game that I think gets a lot of its, its mystery and intrigue from just little hints here and there and not over explaining anything, plus N's character seems to be a very matter of the fact kind of person who I think knew what they were doing the entire time as far as leading up to basically sacrificing themselves. I think they knew that's what they were going to do. And I guess they're not the sort of person that would make a big fanfare about it or get particularly emotional. Just, yep, this is what I gotta do. And then they're gone. I love the sense of mystery in Echo. All the little, all the little details and bits of intrigue that I got out of the dialogue between N and London. Just enough to make me curious and give me some ideas, but not enough to really answer a lot of the mystery, which I think is what makes it so effective. But at the same time, I also wish they dropped some more hints about some of the other questions that I had that they didn't seem to touch on at all. I was expecting there to be more about the glitches, because we saw that black glitchy stuff, and we started out when the you know when we first put the cube into the thing. It started out by basically exploding and taking a chunk out of that that pillar of light. So it seemed like things were kind of glitchy but then we didn't see that stuff anymore for probably like the second half of the game or so it just disappeared and they never touched on it i i'm still wondering what was did the glitch cause anything in particular you know how much of what we just saw is what is supposed to be happening in this place versus it just going wrong i feel like that was mostly what was supposed to happen but i don't know it just feels odd that that whole sort of plot line if you want to call it that seems to have just been dropped i also noticed that when uh when foster woke up at the end 
It looked like they woke up in that original room when, from when we first put the cube in the thing. They woke up on that table. But I noticed the pillar that had exploded before looked perfectly pristine. Does that mean something? And what about the mind and the body entering through different doors? I think that might actually be what happened at the end there. I need to go back and look at what they showed in the cutscene when you, the very first time you put the cube in the thing. I can't remember. Did N lay down on that uh, the trans? What do they call it? Trans? It wasn't transmutation. It was something like that, though. But like the transmutation table thing. Did N lie down on it? Were they on the table the entire time? And so maybe, maybe lying down on it was the body passing through the door, and then the whole challenge was all the mind, the challenge of the mind. And once that challenge was solved, Foster appeared. But why? On the one hand, I want like a little bit more answers, but on the other hand, I'm actually having a lot of fun just thinking about this. The entire place seems so alien, so inhumanly crafted. And yet, the resourcefuls, which as far as I can gather are some sort of a cult led by N's grandfather, their whole, like, purpose in life was to train the perfect person to get to this place. N said that it was like a, a gate crashing party, that they weren't really the ones that were supposed to go there, that they weren't really supposed to win, I guess. I think N thought that maybe the place was meant to be entertainment for the rich, basically, the rich watching the lower classes fight and go through these trials and whatnot, like blood sport or something. But if so, then how come... How come the cube was able to interface with the thing in the base? And how come it was able to bring Foster back? I mean, why did they build that sort of... Why did they build that functionality into the palace? What is that for? Surely if it wasn't built to do that, then it wouldn't be able to do that. Something so incredibly specific. I'm mystified by the purpose of this palace. And the relationship between the resourcefuls to the palace... Versus the relationship of, I forget what the other group was called, but basically we'll just call them the rich, who were the ones that I think maybe built the place, if not just aliens built the place, I don't know. Yeah, this whole game, I loved it. I really, really loved it. The sense of mystery was just amazing, and the scale of everything was just breathtaking. It has a cerebral, uncomfortable, but fascinating sci-fi feel that I just absolutely love. The feeling of playing Echo was absolutely fantastic. The, I guess you call it a gameplay loop or something, was really nice and really tight and always kept me on my toes. So it's mostly a stealth game. You do have the option of shooting, of course, but that really won't work in a lot of situations. You gotta be really careful with when you shoot. So mostly it's a stealth game. And I really like what they what they did with it. It is stealth, but at the same time, you it's not like most stealth games where you often stay very still and typically I'm used to pacifying an entire area so, you know like slowly taking out guards and shooting them with tranquilizer darts or doing a non-lethal takedown on them or something like that just kind of slowly picking them off until the area is clear and then I can just run around out of stealth and just you know pick up whatever I need to pick up in the area that's what I'm used to in a stealth game, but this is a nice twist on it because of the whole, the power going off and a new cycle starting and all of them wake back up again and they respawn. And because that happens every, I don't know, about a minute or two, nothing that you do is really permanent. That's not to say it doesn't matter. It does. It matters for the time that you're in the area. You might want to take out a couple people. But they will come back, so you can't just... You're always kept on your toes. You can't pacify an entire level and then just run through it. You have to constantly be moving and be on your toes, and you know that they're going to come back. And to keep you on your toes even more, you know that they're going to change what they do depending on what you've done. So you got to keep that in the back of your mind, too. You're always moving, taking out just the ones that you need to and not bothering with the other ones because you can't take them all out. And then sometimes they can open doors, sometimes they can't. Sometimes they can go through water, sometimes they have guns. Sometimes they can eat grapes, <laughs> which doesn't do anything, but it's really cute. Yeah, just the flow of that. Power going out, power coming on. Now they're all back again, always on your toes, trying to 
remember what exactly are their capabilities at this moment. What did I do before they reset so I can think of what they might be able to do. Also, the fact that some things don't work when the power is out, but it hasn't reset yet. When it goes dark, you can't recharge your power and it's harder to see. So just the flow of that, you're constantly adapting and changing to the environment and to your echoes. And it just felt really fantastic. And I'm really impressed with the way that they constructed the environments, not only just because of how everything looks, you know, that endless repetition, everything being so extremely expensive and opulent, you know, just marble and like gold and copper and whatever, just everything looking ridiculously expensive, but extremely repetitive and inhuman. Just from an aesthetic perspective, I really liked it because it gave me such a sense of awe and strangeness because it just seemed so inhuman and weird, so generated. So aesthetically, it really worked, but it's also a really clever thing to do because I believe the company that made this, uh, I think they're a pretty small team. So the use of repetition as the aesthetic also is a brilliant way to cut down on the amount of stuff you need to make. So I think that's a great example of using limited resources in a really clever way. All right, so that has been Echo. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and thanks for watching.